And then question to ask how do we build back better? We can build back better or whatever. We have a chance to reset the clock and build back better than before. To build back better than before. From this uh, global pandemic, Joe Biden calls it build back better. Build back better. Building back better. To do things differently. To build back better. We're going to build it back better. And build it back better. To my plan to build back better. Uh, start taking all the problems that have been created in education, mental health, and start to, to build back in a positive way. I have launched a book. Start by saying Brakatha Yahawo, Brakatha Yaharashai, Brakatha Yahawo, Brakatha Yaharashai, Call Halau Yahawo by Shimmy Arashai, Call Halau Yahawo by Shimmy Arashai, by Shimmer Kakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone that told me this doctrine in truth and sincerity. Shalom to the elect. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahawo, which means he is or he exists. By Shim in the name of his only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We know his name to be Yaharashai which means he is the deliverer, he is the savior of the Hebrew Israelites from the pedigree of your father, Ba'ashim in the name of the Ruach Kodash, which means the Holy Spirit that's able to give us the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of who we are, which are the true Hebrew Israelites, so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native American, or of the speckled bird looking like the other nations in your spirit bear witness with this doctrine, you could be one of the elect. Shalom. We've been discontinued from our heritage because we went off following after false gods and false idols. We weren't following the law, set your commandments that was given to us by our forefathers. And because of those offenses, we were sent into captivity. But through Yahweh Shai HaMashiach being uh, that savior, we're able to have this uh, this wisdom, which is the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, to be able to give us comfort in these times. To be able to give us comfort through the scriptures. And to be able to know who our adversary is, which is Esau, Edom. Esau means wasted away is, and they are the biblical Edomites that it speaks about in the scriptures that would control the earth, would have the fatness of the earth, and would have a great sword. And that's what you're seeing on display today. You know, the, the sword comes with many different variations. You know, they have the military bases. They have their lies, the deception. They have their tell live vision where they're able to create fear mongering. Um, have order out of kale, which is in the Latin, which which uh, is the halogen uh, dialect, which is um, problem, action, solution, which you're seeing on display with these uh, shootings, which you're seeing on display with um, over there and, and the wars over there in, um, in the eastern side or by Russia. OK, these are all strategically planned to be able to bring in their new world order. Novus Order Secorium, which is on the back of your dollar bill. And that's what these elites want to do to be able to have everyone um, put into slavery, perpetual slavery through what their technology, through the karagma, which is a graven image in your forehead or in your hand. It's something that they want to implant into you so they can be able to um, be able to monitor your every move, to be able to track your carbon uh, footprint, you know, how much you uh, eat, how much uh, you're breathing. And they want to be able to track your every move. Going into Esau Edom, his uh, God complex, and he, that he is what a proud, very proud man. He thinks he's the, you know, the heavenly father, and that goes back to Job twelve and sixteen, where it speaks about, um, you know, their strength and wisdom in Yahabah Shemuel Shai, strength and wisdom in Yahabah Shemuel Shai, and um, and the deceiver and the deceiver are his. You know, he's the one that can create 
uh, the left, which is the wicked, and the right, which is the righteous. Okay, and that's what you're seeing on display is the good versus evil, and they're all obedient to Yahweh Shem Shai, bringing in the kingdom of Yahweh Shai, and the elect are going to be what joint heirs, and that name is going to be magnified again like it was uh, during Egypt, according to John 12 and 28. Okay, and what you're seeing when they talk about build back better, and when we're speaking about these elites, we're speaking about the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts. These are the banksters of the world that are that fund both sides of the both sides of the war. Okay, they have a thing called control opposition. Okay, and then they have their their true agenda, and that goes also through their legislation, the Democrat and the Republican, the two horns. You know, they give you the um, you know the illusion that you can be able to be able to vote for you know for for justice but you can't vote for justice this devil is always speaking with a double tongue the only person you can trust in is yahabah shemiah Shai, because he is the comforter and that's what we're um you know the men of the lord the watchmen are here to do the true men of the lord are, are give our people warning and bid them to the marriage you know because this devil is coming down is going to come down like a flood like a madman sparing none build back better make america great again the great reset um these are all things that are going to be able to that they want to do to be able to control you, okay? To put you back in those uh, uh, slavery. Now we're still in slavery, but we're now we're just in a, a corporate, you know, spiritual uh, slavery, okay? But before there was yokes and yokes and irons around our neck, okay? And that's that's basically what they want to do. They want to brand you, um, you know, by implementing that that um, that karagma inside of you. So they can be able to track every move, just like they were doing during slavery. Okay, so this is, again, nothing new is under the sun. So basically this lesson is going to be, um, you know, going through the spirit of, uh, you know, the different times that these uh, these heathens tried to build up certain kingdoms to be able to, you know, unite everyone together. But we know through that Yahweh Shem Shai has a chosen line and he doesn't want everyone to be together because everyone's not meant to be together. You can't have clean with unclean, okay? And the servants of Yahweh Shemar Shai are coming back to that uh, spiritual cleanness through Yahweh Shai, okay? So this is Ecclesiastics 1 and 9. I want to get this in the NLT. It says, history merely repeats itself. It has all been done before. Nothing under the sun is truly new. So when they're trying to bring in their new world order, this has already happened before. Uh, the Babylonian captivity, you know, uh, you have the Neo-Babylonian captivity, you had uh, the the Greek the Grecians captivity, okay, and now you have the captivity right now, and these are all heathens that were trying to, um, you know, bring everyone together through a new world order of them having a uh, full control and full reign. But the Lord doesn't want that, and every single time what He destroyed that or um, confounded that, okay, and and broke it broke it apart, and just like He's gonna do right now. The, all these plans that they're doing. It's all going to go to not, okay? They're not going to be able to have the honey brooks and the, the waters that it speaks about in Job 20. They're not going to be able to, um, all the things that they thought they were going to do, they're not going to be able to do. Because in the fullness of the sufficiency of their um, of their works, they're going to be caught in the straight, which is a position of difficulty. Ecclesiastics 1 and 10. Sometimes people say, here is something new, but actually it is old. Nothing is ever truly new. Yeah, so nothing is ever truly new. It's already been done. And that's what these uh, elites do. They just um, take certain things that they did in their different captivities and they, they bring them uh, to this part right now. And that, that's leading to Babylon, Babylon the Great, which is America, which is the USA. Okay? And that's according to the scriptures. Right? It's spiritually known as Sodom and spiritually Egypt. And you see the depictions of those captivities. You know, you see the, um, you know, the pyramids. You see the what the... The legislation that they're pushing, which is all the same thing as before. You see the worship of idols. You see the man on man, woman on woman. You see the woman uh, above the man. Okay. And you see again, our people, what? In captivity. Okay. But through this word of Yahweh Shem Shai, we're able to have comfort and to be able to rejoice at what the prophecies that are happening. What are the, what are the, some of the main prophecies? Uh, you have the uh, World War III that's brewing. Okay. If it's not already here. But it's going to touch Babylon ultimately, right? When the elect is, uh, is uh, sealed, that's when all the destruction is going to come. But we know the end is not yet. 
far as these uh, rumors and wars, we're waiting for what the Kragma, which they have all the infrastructure put up. They have the 5G and the 6G towers. Okay, they have where they're taking out the paper dollar, the, the fiat currency, and bringing in their central banking digital currency, creating a blockchain where they can be able to just cut you off at any time if you don't comply to their uh, mandates. Okay, and this is their new world order. This is their great reset. This is the, the build back better. This is what it's all uh, uh, trying to to bring it all together so they can be able to what take over, take over the world, the pinky and brain uh, mindset. OK, and and the Lord's going to let them do that to a certain point. But again, the elect is not going to be touched. OK, they're not going to be um, subjected to these things. They're not going to bow down to the image. They're going to be able to have uh, the let that standard lifted up that it speaks about Isaiah 59 and 19. When they're closing down the, you know, the the stores and, and um, things like that, and there's a famine, the servants of Yahweh Shema Shai, according to Isaiah 65 and 13, are going to be able to eat, while the rest of the people are going to be starving that mocked and scoffed, okay? And a man is going to be what? More precious than um, fine gold, because right now the man is um, being demasculine, demasculine uh, you know, in this world. They're being put as uh, the lowest of the low. OK, and the woman's being elevated and, and ultimately wickedness is being elevated because even these transformers, because that's what um, Klaus Schwab is. He's a, um, a guy that dresses up in women clothing. OK, and also you have what you have Yuval Noah Herrera and he's a man on man. So these these are the people that rule your world. And, and Joe, Joe Biden, you know, he does all sorts of wicked things far as he's always rubbing up on kids and things like that. And those pedophilia and bestiality type of mentalities is being risen up. And those, it says when those things are, are going to be rise, when they're all fulfilled, all the wickedness is fulfilled, then judgment shall come. And we're seeing a lot of the judgment um, starting right now with people, uh, you know, being kicked out of their houses, you know, people just being randomly killed, randomly stabbed. You're seeing all these things. And these are all the things that happened before. So... Let's go into a Genesis. Call a Yahweh by Shimei Arashai by Shimei Kakadash, 11.44. That's right. And those numbers right there, you know, that's a symbolizing of, of the Lord, you know, being with us. You know, to be able to give us hope, to be able to give us faith. You know, while we're while we're in our captivity. Right. So this is uh, Genesis 11 and 4. And then said, and this is uh, Nimrod. OK, uh, this is a time of Nimrod, Nimrod and, and Ceramus and Talmus. The thing that you see, the Oblis over there in, uh, um, you know, Washington, D.C., which Washington, D.C. symbolizes Petra, which symbolizes what Mount Seir, the, the Edomites. OK, um, and that goes back to even this time. Now, we know Nimrod was a Kushite. OK, but his he had the same mindset of Esau Edom, and he was also what, a cunning hunter and he wanted to build a, a city. Uh, that was all together. So that's what this story is going into. So this is Genesis 11 and 4. And they said, go to let us build. Actually, let me. Yeah, we'll start from four. And then said, go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven. And let us make a name, let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So this is the beginning of them, you know, building a tower. Five, and the Lord Yahweh came to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Okay, six, and the Lord Yahweh said, behold, the people, yeah, and how does he see it? Through the angels, the angels that come down. The Lord Yahweh said, behold, the people is one. And they said, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them and which they have imagined to do. So let me read this in the NLT. It says six. Look, he said the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Seven. It says go to let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one other's one other's speech. So, again, that's how you because before you had what one language, which was the Hebrew. And then it became, you know, these different languages through through that time. And that was to be able to confuse them. Right. So they wouldn't be able to accomplish their new world order. Eight. So the Lord Yahweh scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the whole earth. And they left off to build the city. So, again, they weren't able to <laughs> build the city. They were all, you know, 
speaking different languages, right? And that's the power of the Lord, Genesis 11 and 9. Therefore, as the name is called Babel, because Yahweh did the confound that language of all the earth, from thence did the Lord Yahweh scatter them abroad on the face of the earth. Yeah, so when you go into this word Babel, okay, it goes into, um, oh, let's just get it. Which uh, America today is known as modern day Babylon, which goes back to Babel, which goes back to confusion. Let's just get it. Where is it? Okay, Babel, that's in uh, um, Hebrew 894. Yeah, so confusion by mixing. And this is known as what the great melting pot here in Babylon, the great America. Okay, and there's nothing but confusion. You know, you ha again spoke about the things, the man on man, the woman on woman, the transformers, you know, the kids being taught by tra transformers about um, anal sex. Um, you have, you know, all sorts of uh, wickedness. You know, you have these these shootings, whether they're real or not. But the thing is, is take away, take away the guns. But who's the number one arms dealer? Babylon the Great. OK, because, again, it's controlled by these elites. And they that is their um, that is their blessing is that that sword. OK, which, again, you see the, see on display. That's uh, Revelation six and four. They went out a red horse. OK, to what still still um, peace from the earth, roughly paraphrasing. OK, so, again, that was that was one sign of something what they were trying to build up. And that was Babylonian captivity and what they were. They weren't able to accomplish that. The Lord scattered them abroad. So we're going to go into this is the, the Neo Babylonian captivity with uh, Nicobesia. OK, which, um, you know, when you go into that word, it means uh, Neo uh, the hold the crown. OK, as far as Nicobesia, the, the whole the, when you go into the meaning. So this is Daniel three. And what's the point? The Lord doesn't want. Let me let me just get it real quick because I was going to get it a little bit later, but that's all right. The Lord doesn't want you to be one nation. OK, far as these other heathen nations, because these other heathen nations are not part of this. OK, so that's why it goes back to what numbers one and 18 that, um, you know, goes from the pedigree of your father. That's how you know if you're an Israelite, no matter what you actually look like. That's why his heritage is what of a speckled bird. And that's why it goes into Romans eight and 16. Uh, if your spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the most high, your spirit has to bear witness. You know, you have to believe that our Lord is a so-called black man. OK, you have to believe in the names. You have to uh, eat this whole road, the whole doctrine. You can't just have, you know, one part and then, oh, I don't like the other. That means, well, ultimately, you're not of the elect or you're a two third. OK, but the thing is, is that, you know, to be able to really uh, be of the elect, then you have to, you know, accept these accept these things. Because, again, it speaks about, you know, um, I, ate, I ate the Ezekiel three and one where it speaks about the honey. And it was good. You know, I ate it. it was good. You know, it's good to find out you're an Israelite. But the thing is, is that the more and more wisdom that you get in this thing, the more and more persecution you're going to have. Because, again, we're still in bondage. All right. So right here, this is I'm going to highlight it real quick. This is Deuteronomy 32 and 8. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So again, he separated the children of Israel. Okay? Or Saki, not the children, but he separated the people. Okay? And so that's the whole point. That's why um, when they tried to build the New World Order as far as the, the Babylonian captivity, what, what happened? It was, it was um, he confounded the language. Right. So I just want to bring that out. And he the Lord has a what a chosen line. And he doesn't want these heathen nations to be a part of it. OK, they're the ones they're going to be they're going to be in slavery. They are servants. They're not created. Uh, they're not the they're not the chosen line. Deuteronomy seven and six. For thou art holy people unto Yahweh, by Shimei our Shai, had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Yeah, so anybody, when you're trying to be equal with these other heathen nations, then you're you're putting yourself at a low state. You're putting yourself not at uh, being a royal, uh, you know, kings and priests and and, and, uh, pr and princesses, right? You're putting yourself um, at a low state. You're putting yourself at a servant. 
when you're saying that everyone's equal. No one, th these people are not equal to us. They're nothing but a bucket of spittle. I'm going to prove that. It says, the Lord Yahweh did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people before you were the fewest of all people. But be but because Yahweh loved you, yes, yeah, so he loved us, so what? He gave us the law, set your commandments. These other heathen nations weren't given these things. That's why they'll eat a bat. They'll eat a... Uh, you know, they'll eat pig. Now, our people, you know, um, eat pig and things like that. But again, that's going against the dietary laws. The law, uh, Yahweh Shema Shai gave us law, statute, commandments to follow. And when we follow those things, the Lord is with us. When we don't follow them, we start to go into oppression. We start to go into darkness, which is confusing, confusion, which is Babylon, <laughs> which is Babel, right? Deuteronomy 7 and 8. But because Yahweh loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto you, the fathers had Yahweh brought you out of the mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of the bondman from the hand of the Pharaoh. So again, our Lord redeemed us out of the hand of uh, Pharaoh. And, and according to Romans 9 and 17, it speaks about um, Pharaoh is compared to uh, Esau Edom. Now he's going to what break those bands of Esau Edom because right now he's hardening his heart to not let his what people go. But we know according to uh, scriptures that the Lord is going to what glorify his name again. And that's what the servants of Yahweh Shema Shai are um you know having their faith and putting their trust in that are lusting after uh, our lord to come back john 12 and 28 father glorify thy name so again that's your speaking in red letter then came their voice from heaven saying i have both glorified it i will glorify it again so in egypt what did he do he raised up a, um basically a standard for all israel to be saved and this time he's going to raise up a standard for um you know for the elect to be able to save to be able to be endured those miracles and that's even before Yahweh Shai comes back because again there shall be no flesh saved Deuteronomy 4 and 6 keep thou therefore do them with this is the wisdom and that's speaking about the law set your commandments okay and let me just highlight it real quick we'll start from 5 it says Deuteronomy 4 and 5 behold I have taught you statutes and judgments even as Yahweh my power commanded me that you should do in the land whether you go to possess 6 keep therefore and do them this is your wisdom okay and wisdom is what? That light, that truth, and that understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all your statutes and say, Surely this great nation is wise in understanding people. Seven, for what nation is there so great with how Yahweh so nigh unto them? As Yahweh by Hashem Shai, our power is in all things that we call upon him for. Yeah, so he's in all things when we call upon him. But again, two-thirds of our people don't even know who he is. Okay, and you should constantly be, it's his prayer without ceasing. Okay, prayer is a, is a heavy thing that can get you through whatever that you're going through. And it speaks about in James 1 that you ask, you ask for whatever that you that you need, okay, and, the, and without wavering, and the Lord's going to be able to provide you for it, uh, pro provide you with it, okay? But you have to believe in that. You have to, what, believe in this report, okay? So going back to, um, oh, yeah, so I want to get one more thing, you know, again, speaking about you know how we're above these other heathen nations. So when you when you lower yourself to to um you know to Esau Edom or say that you're equal or everybody can be saved, that that means you're you have Stockholm syndrome, okay? And the servants of Yahweh Shema Shai have that what dreptomania, which is which is to um not uh, we don't want to be under our oppressor. We don't want to be a part of this society. And it speaks about First John two and fifteen: love not the world or the things in it. Why? Because everything here is vanity. And vexation of spirit. Okay. So this is a uh, second Ezra six. What we got? I think about 34. Let's see. That might actually be, let's see. Real quick. Yeah. 54. Yeah, come. Second Ezra six and fifty four. And after these things, Adam also whom thou thou madest, our Lord Yahweh Shai, our Lord Yahweh, all creatures of him, come we all people and the people also whom thou had chosen. So again, there's a chosen chosen line, okay, that the Lord is supping with. Now we have uh, Israel, you know, the twelve tribes coming together, okay. But there's going to be elect out of that. Out of that elect, you have those are the the, the chosen line. And then um, even out of the, and then out of all the people, there is, again, a chosen people, which are the Hebrew Israelites. OK, 55. All this I have spoken before thee, O Lord, Yahweh, because thou madest the world for our sakes. As for other people whose 
also come of Adam, so don't we all come from Adam, right? Thou hast said they are nothing, but be like unto a spittle. Yeah, so that means nothing. You know, when you spit on the ground, you don't you don't think about, hey, where'd that spit go, okay? And has likened the abundance of them, yeah, so the, the, the most of them, right, of them unto the drop that fall from a vessel. And now, O oh Lord, Yahweh, behold, these heathen which have, and who is the heathens? These are these uh, true goyim. Okay, which are the other other heathen nations? These are the wicked that consulted together to hide thy hidden ones, which are the Hebrew Israelites, starting with the head tribe of uh, Esau, Edom, okay, Amalek, right, and then uh, going down to um, you know the Moabites, the Philistines, these Hamites, okay, these um, these uh, these Japanese, the Ammonites, okay. Tyree, all these different things that they have consulted together against that hidden ones, okay? And they're going to be punished because, again, we've been in captivity under all of them. And they're nothing but heathens, but as it says, a bucket of spittle. It says, and now, O Lord, Yahweh, behold these heathen, which I have ever rep reputed as nothing, have begun to be Yahweh's over us and devour us. Yeah, so, again, we were led into captivity. Why? Because we didn't follow the law, set your commandments. And it speaks about that in Deuteronomy 28. And, uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 15 um, on down and it speaks about the curses that will fall upon our heads if we didn't obey the Lord and the uh, Deuteronomy 28 1 through 15 it speaks about the things that we would have if we did the right things and the servants of Yahweh Shem Shai are coming back to that order okay so I just want to touch on that and just to reiterate it again because these devils are trying to unite everyone together under one banner under what wickedness Okay, and that's not what the Lord wants, and he's going to destroy that. So Isaiah 40 and 15, behold, the nations are a drop of a bucket and are counted as small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh the isles as very little thing. Right. Yeah. So these these are nothing but they're not <laughs> they're nothing but a bucket of spill. Like I said, you know, you spit on the ground, you don't think about it. And that's how the Lord views these other heathen nations. Okay. And this is uh, Isaiah 40 and 17. Isaiah 40 and 17. All nations before him are as nothing. They are counted to him less than nothing in vanity. Yeah, so they're nothing but vanity, emptiness, and froth. Okay? They're nothing to the Heavenly Father. He has a what chosen line, which is what Romans 11 and 7, which is the elect. Okay? Romans 11 and 7, what then? Israel not obtained what she seeketh for, but the election hath unattained it, and the rest were blinded. Yeah, so the rest are blinded by what? 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, um, the God of this world, which is the Shaitan, which is Esau, Edom, in the flesh. Okay, they've been blinded by what? Jesus Christ. They've been blinded by their woman. They've been blinded by what? Uh, money. They've been blinded by, um, you know, just lusting after uh, things in this world, you know, their greed their lust and they didn't come back to the heavenly father and ultimately what's going to happen they're going to be judged and they're not what kissing thy son and that's the, a lot of the reasons why they're ha they're catching hell this is real quick i just get it in the nlt psalms 2 and 11 psalms 2 and 11 serve thy lord yahweh with fear and rejoice with trembling yeah that's that's what we should be doing philippians 2 and 12 you know um you know, coming at this, coming at this truth with fear and trembling. That's why you see brothers uh, constantly doing videos, constantly on the highways and the byways. Okay, because they ultimately they fear the Lord. And these are these are a signs of who you stand for. When you stand for this word, we're standing stiffly on that rock, not on that sand, because that sand could what could be moved. That rock can't be moved, which is, goes back to Peter, which goes back to uh, Petra, which goes back to our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Okay, da you know, goes back to David, right? goes back to Yahweh Shai ultimately, right? Psalms, because uh, Peter is what? The church. And that's also King David, Zerubbabel, right? Psalms 2 and 12. And, and what's being raised up? The tabernacle of David. While the um, tabernacle of Saul is acting weaker and weaker, right? Roughly paraphrasing. Psalms 2 and uh, 12. And this is, um, this is in, I want to read this in the NLT. And it says, submit to Yahweh's royal son. Who's his royal son? Yahweh Shai. He is the deliverer. He is the savior for the Hebrew Israelites. But now the Lord is only supping with what the elect right now. The two thirds have to come come through the bowels of the elect. Kiss thy royal son or he will become angry and you will be destroyed in the midst of your activity. So when you're at your, your clubs, OK, when you're uh, being in that merch spirit, you know, when you're, um, you know, uh, stripping on the pole, when you're twerking, um, you know, he's going to catch you in your act when you're, you're doing rap videos. He's going to catch you in your activities. 
okay? And he's going to hit you up. Those are those, uh, what, spirits created for vengeance, okay? And the Lord is is a, known as the El Shaddai, a demon-like power, okay? So he he's the one that orchestrates all the hits, okay? He's the true hitman, right? It says, the midst of your activities for his anger flares up in an instance, but what joy for all who take refuge in him. Yes, yeah, so what joy those that take refuge in him. Who's going to take refuge in, in, in Yahweh Shai? Okay, the elect. And just to get something real quick, you know, to tell you that, uh, you know, to clarify that our Lord is omnipotent. He does both sides. So when you see something bad happen, you see a, a baby getting judged. Okay, that's ultimately the Lord. Okay, because again, we're paying for our sins in our past life and in this life. You don't know what what uh, certain things happen. Okay, that's why we're praying that, um, you know, for mercy and, and um, you know, mercy in this time. Okay, because again, we, we were, our, our righteousness is of filthy rags, right? We really don't even serve this word, but the Lord has chosen us to be able to push it and to be able to, you know, have the understanding and ultimately to believe in it. Isaiah 45 and 7, I form the light. What's the light? The light is the wisdom, which is this truth. Okay, I create darkness, which is what? The confusion, Esau, Edom. I make peace, which is the righteousness, Yahweh Shai, the tabernacle of David. I create evil, which is evil goes into bad times, which is Esau Edom. He's creating bad times. He's creating what a strategic famine, which is a siege. Okay, they're cutting off the um, supply over there in Ukraine, which is known as the breadbasket. And that's going to cut out a lot of supplies around the world. I think they funded over 40 million uh, uh, people or something like that. And now that's being cut off. Okay, or will be cut off. It's going to get worse. It's not going to get better. I create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. So our Lord is omnipotent. He does, he has the left side, which is Esau, Edom. Okay, and he's controlling them to be able to push forth this wickedness, ultimately to bring in uh, judgment on two, on these heathen nations, but also two thirds of our people and the righteous he's going to preserve to that, to that last day. Okay, so going back to this is Daniel. This is another account. When they were trying to what create, um, they were trying to have you worship these idols. And what's the the modern day idol is the karagma, which is the beast system, the whore, which is which is Babylon the Great that rides upon the beast system, which is what the NATO and the EU. And with these other countries, you have over 198 countries that just gave away their sovereignty, which is their rights, their rights to. They gave away their rights to what the beast system to to comply and bow down where they can be able to uh, go to these different countries. And if you don't bow down to their um, beast system and to their mandates, then they're going to call you a health risk and they're going to put you in these internment camps. OK, where they're able to legally execute you um, through their draconian measures, because, again, they have their legislation. But now they're they're taking away that because um, Joe Budhead, what did he do? He signed away a, a national emergency act or he signed us into that. OK, which is go, which gives all rights to what FEMA, which is a federal emergency act. OK, where they can be able to call you a health risk. OK, and that's what they're going to. That's how they're going to try to come down with great rain, because, again, you have to what get a green card. OK, or you have to have the Karama. You won't be able to go in certain cities. That's why. Uh, we're praying for that hedge. So this is the account right here. Daniel 3 and 1. And this is uh, the Neo-Babylonian captivity. The new Babylonian, Neo means a new. Okay, Babylonian captivity. And we know that Babylon, which goes back to Babel, means uh, what confusion. So the new confusion, right? And which we see today is the what the modern, okay? Which they're trying to do the same thing. Daniel 3 and 1. Nechobezer the king made an image of a of gold whose height was three score cubits and breadth three uh, thereof six cubits. He set up the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. So again, this was a place in Dura um, where they set up with the golden calf for people to go worship. Okay, and what's the modern day uh, uh, idol worship? Again, the Karagma. They want you to worship the beast system, calling that they, they are the gods. When we're not supposed to worship no image, no golden image. We're supposed to worship our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? We're supposed to glorify those names. Right? Daniel 3 and 2. Necrobesia. And that's why our people are getting visited. This, let's get that. Because this is in the um, Exodus. This was a, a big reason why we were put into captivity. Because we were following after these false gods. 
because that's the first commandment. My, I'm a jealous, you know, don't worship other God. Let me just get it. I'll get this whole thing. Exodus 20 and 1. And Yahweh spoke of these words, saying, I am Yahweh thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Yes, yeah, so the house of slavery. We're in hardcore slavery over there. Okay? Which is the same thing we're doing over here. The Lord has light, lightened up the measure, but we're still under slavery. This devil is still in control. Okay? And he's constantly oppressing Jake, shooting down Jake in the street. You know, uh, making us, um, trying to make us, what, um, bow down to this beast system. Okay, through his, um, you know, his mandates. Okay. Three, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So that's clear and plain. No other gods. So if you're worshiping the calf, you know, that was the calf back then. But if you're worshiping these beast systems and you're in this world, you're not being transformed or being renewed. The Lord is going to what? Come visit you. Four, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. And wasn't that a graven image far as the um, the, the calf that Necobizia was doing? Right. Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth and beneath that is in the water and under the earth. Yeah, so you have these Moabites, they'll worship a fish, okay? They'll worship, uh, uh, you know, these fish and things like that, okay? And you're not supposed to do that either. Those are the, those gods were meant, were created for, um, you know, for these other heathen nations to worship. We were created to worship Yahweh Shem Shai, our true power. And that's how we have all paint, all, let me just get something real quick. This is uh, Psalms. That's how we have, that's how we come back to the Lord, as far as rehearsing the righteous acts to the best of our ability. It says Psalms 96 and 5. It says, um, let me get four. Psalms 96 and 4, the Lord Yahweh is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all gods of nations are idols, but Yahweh made all the heavens. So again, the Lord created all these, um, you know, again, the, on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, right? And what, he creates, you know, Isaiah 45 and 7, like we just read. And he's above what all these gods. Because again, really, these gods are on the left-hand side of Yahweh Shem created to be, be what? Stumbling blocks. Exodus 20 and 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them or nor serve them, for I am Yahweh, your power, am a jealous God, visiting iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third, fourth generation of them that hate me. And that's what's happening right now. Our people are being visited, the third, fourth generation. How do we know that? Through the chariots in the in the in the sky, through measuring the time diligently, second Ezra 9 and 1. Okay, measuring the time diligently, seeing what these devils are doing. According to according to prophecy, okay, they're coming with the infrastructure of the karagma, okay, they're coming down with the um, you know the the famine, okay, and all these are the what the signs of the end times. So it speaks about in Matthew's twenty four, second Ezra sixteen. This is Daniel three, and two, and then Necobizia the king sent to gather together the princes and the governors and the captains and the judges and the treasurers the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which the Necrobesia, the king, had set up. Three, then the princes and the governor, and all these are the same things that are happening right now. Okay, you're seeing all these different nations, you know, that the, the, they speak different languages are from different countries, like uh, the United, uh, United Nations General Assembly meeting, okay, these Bilderberg meetings. All these different uh, heathen nations are what, meeting up, to consult together to bring in their new world order because this is going to be in a, uh, the world as an oinkimented sense. It's going to be all around the world. It's a new world order, a one world government, uh, a cashless society, a one world military, okay, where your children are raised by the government, which means mind control, okay, where you, you can't have, you know, farms or anything like that. They control all the food, bringing it in the, the impossible food for you to eat. They already have genetically modified food organisms, right? They have, um, and they want ultimate control to be able to watch you, okay? That carbon footprint, something like you're seeing over there in, um, you know, in China, okay? China's, you know, they have the lockdowns. I think they let them out as far as the lockdowns, but I guarantee a lot of people got knocked off, you know? Because, again, they're pushing a communist uh, a regime, which is the same thing that they're going to be pushing over here, which is called, it's a strategy, which is called Clower Piven, okay? Clower Piven um, strategy where they basically knock down the economy, okay, what you're seeing over here, okay, you see, you see they're in debt, if you look at the debt clock, and, um, you know, so that, and they're constantly throwing money everywhere, why, to, to, to knock down the economy, to bring it to a low state, 
And then what are they going to bring in? They're going to bring in their universal basic income where everybody it has a certain amount uh, and they'll and and they'll be able to live. That that's why it speaks about the great reset. It says you will own nothing and be happy. And that's what they're going to that's what they're going to push. And but only the servants of Yahweh Shema Shai are going to be all right. Okay, they're going to be um they're going to have that edge according to what Psalms 91. Okay? And so when they're bringing in all these princes and governor and all these different leaders of these nations all together, which is the same thing that Kovizier was doing. Daniel 3 and 3. Then the princes of the governors and the captains and the judges and the treasurers and the counselors and the sheriffs and the rulers of the provinces were gathered together into the dedication of the image of Nekobizir. The king had set up and they stood before the image that the Nekobizir had set up. And that's what they're doing right now. They're setting up what they're, they're um, the infrastructure of the Karagma. Okay, that that um, that uh, Beetlejuice that they put out a couple of years ago, that was just the beginning. Okay. And now they do a Psalm 64. They do a diligent search, and now they're going to push it uh, even harder for the Karagma. Okay, it says then a herald cried aloud to, it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages. Okay, it says let me read this in the NLT. It says then a herald shouted out, people of all races and nations and languages, listen to the king's command. Right? It says five that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, sack, bolt. Right? Uh, Palestry, the the climber, and all the kinds of music you fall down and worship the golden image, the Nekobizir, the king has set up. So again, that's the same thing they want you to do today. They want you to to bow down to to the image of the beast. And how do you do that by um, having that imp, having them implant you, and then you're able to what buy and sell? Because that's how they're going to try to control you is by the buying and selling of uh, foods and, and certain resources. You won't be able to work or or do anything else. Right. Daniel three and six, whose faileth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the of the burning fire and the furnace. OK. And that's the same thing they're telling you what in Revelation 13 and 16. Let me just get that real quick. Slaki. Because the the the, uh, the elites have been given power to what um, to to um, deceive the nations. Revelation thirteen and fifteen, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast shall both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Okay, so it was, it was the same thing that was speaking about over there, right? And so what's the image of the beast? Their philosophies that they're pushing. The NATO and the EU are pushing with these these uh, taking away your sovereignty, taking in your rights where they can be able to call you a health risk. OK, and those are those are, again, their philosophies, their transformer, the woman on woman, man on man, bowing down to what the Karagma. It says 16 and and he caused it both all small, great and rich and poor, free and bond to receive a what a Karagma in their right hand and their foreheads. And aren't they um, starting to implement certain things like that? With you have uh, what Elon Musk, okay? Then you have what uh, Surgeon, which is another company where they're gonna have these brain interfaces, and they're coming with what these um, these false miracles, these uh, socket, these lying uh, miracles, okay? Which you go into the word lying and goes into what pseudos, which it says in uh, the definition, it says in a broad sense, not what it seems to be. Yeah, so these devils are lying because they don't actually know. Science means to know, and they don't know. First Timothy six and twenty that. A science falsely so-called and that's what they come with okay and what did joe butthead say when he first came into office we're not going to trust in our legislation we're going to trust in the science okay which is the same thing they're doing which is they're putting their trust in um and their own um you know in their own philosophies and their technology when the lord gave it to them they're not they're, that again that goes back to his uh, proud spirit right it says 17, and that no man may buy or sell, except that he had the karagma or the name of the beast and the number of his name. So again, when you when you uh when people take that, that brings out a universal product code, okay, because they want you to be what the product and they want to be able to perpetually use you as slavery. And that's how they're gonna be able to have people bow down is by buying and selling. You're not gonna be able to go into certain stores. They did that a little bit um when this thing came out a couple of years ago. You couldn't go into certain stores. If you didn't have the mask or if you didn't have, um, you know, if you didn't have the uh, the pass, you know, it wasn't everywhere. But again, they did a diligent search. Right. And they do have certain programs where they have the universal basic income that's being 
uh, implemented where people are just, you know, you, you, well, they do it with the farmers. They pay them to not even, um, to not farm anymore. Okay. And that's going to be, that's creating what the famine. And then you have uh, Bill Gates buying over what, 300,000 acres over here in Babylon the Great. And you know, he's doing it over there in India and he's over there in what, um, Africa, because over there in Africa, they're, they're speaking about this devil and they don't want him there. But again, this, this devil enlarges this place as hell. Let's get that. Because this is what he's doing when he's gathering these other nations, which is the same thing as before. <clears throat> Habakkuk 2 and 4. Yeah, so Habakkuk, let me get three. For the vision, yes, yeah, so the judgments is yet for a point in time, but the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So it's not tearing. It's not, and tarry means to delay. It's not delaying. It's actually turning up like, like uh, <laughs> you know, Apostle Tahar spoke about. Uh, you know, when he coined this year, he said the year of Yahab Hashem Hashai turning up. So when uh, Yahab Hashem Hashai is turning up on the left hand side, which is the wicked, uh, on the right hand side, you have brothers turning up. Okay, Come on. Habakkuk 2 and 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. And that's speaking about Esau, Edom. That's speaking about the white man of this world, that, that these elites that are pushing forth with their uh, wickedness. They're not upright in him because they want to implant you. They want you to uh, they have. <laughs> The, the elder uh, Yashawamba put out a video, you know, yesterday, I think it was, you know, where they had a, a, a woman or a girl or something. And basically she had reverse or she had uh, Joe Budden, not Joe Budden, but Joe uh, Benjamin, the movie. Right. I think I said that wrong, but you guys get the point that they had the, uh, the re basically the reverse. You know, you're young. When you're a baby, you're young, but then when you're a baby, you're actually old. So it's the reverse of that. And they had this little girl that looked like basically a little alien. Okay. And they're trying to, um, you know, reverse the as far as the DNA, which they'll never be able to do. Okay. Because again, they still don't know how the body works. They don't know how animals work. Okay. Because that wasn't given to them, but they still act like they know everything. That's that, that's that pride. But the just shall live by its faith. Yeah. The elect is going to live by faith because that's, uh, you know, it speaks about Hebrews 11 and 6 that it is impossible to please him without faith, that he is a rewarder that diligently seek him the salvation. And who's that salvation? And that's through Yahweh Shai. That's roughly paraphrasing that. But that's our salvation is in Yahweh Shai. And we have to uh, have faith and have hope in that because that's all we have. You know, if you go back into the world, you're just going to get hit, you know, get hit with a missile, hit with a karabma, or, or got to deal with these wicked women. One of the, you know, either way, the Lord has many, many ways to kill. Or many ways to um, put you, you know, put you in a low place when you're not, um, you know, rehearsing the righteous acts. You're not, you're not doing the work, right? Habakkuk two and five. Yeah. Also because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man. Neither keep it that home. He enlarges his desire as hell, and he has is as death. Yeah. So he's a very proud man because he's boasting about his technology that that Yahweh actually gave him. Okay. And that's a fool when you don't when you don't worship your true power. Okay, that's a fool. That means you don't know nothing. It means you're gonna get you're gonna get judged and you're gonna get killed. Okay, he's a proud man. Yeah, he's covering up our our Lord's uh, face with uh, his image, his pale face image. When our Lord is actually a so-called black man, putting forth his white images, going back to Serapis Christi, Caesar Borgir, and what you see today, which is Jesus Christ, which is that white image, that pale face, his long hippie, long hippie hair, which is that's not how our Lord looks at all. Okay, according to scriptures, and he lives as hell. Yeah, hell is a condition. He's he's trying to weigh. He's putting hell on all these different uh, countries in an oinkman in sense again to bring in his what new world order. Yeah, Esau is his death. Everything he pushes is death. You have, um, it's a beautiful day out here today, and you have uh, the barium aluminum in the air. You have what the GMO foods. Okay, you have fluoride in your water. You brush your teeth. You got fluoride in that. Okay, you you you're in a relationship with a woman, and and she she got her um. She got them uh, <laughs> the exercise pants on so everybody can see what they got. And that's the most normal thing. I went to the store today and was just like, you know, there, there's probably out of, you know, 50 women, right? Probably, you know, 48 of them had had all the same pants on. OK, showing everything. OK, and that's how the society is when our Lord, when our people should be covered or women should be covered up. OK, and that's just the wickedness of this place. And that's pushing forth uh, a lot of death, a lot of uh, adulterous, you know, generation. It says, and cannot be satisfied, but he gather unto him all nations and heap unto him all people. So that's what he's done over there with, um, you know, the, the, the pandemic treaty meetings, which is the, um, 
the Davos meetings, which they actually moved that up from, um, it's supposed to be, I think, in November, which is in the winter, right? And they moved it up to uh, right now, showing you that this devil knows that he has but a short time, Revelation 12 and 12. Okay, he knows that he has a short time, so they want to start to implementing what these uh, these uh, blackouts, these EMPs, where they hit the grid, knocking down the uh, knocking out your your bank system, okay, knocking out the bank system, and then you're gonna then you uh, they want the people to comply. And again, a lot of these people are going to start to get, when these blackouts start to happen, that's when a lot of people start to do a lot of spoiling of goods. A lot of people, all these women that think they're at ease, they're going to start to um, get ravaged by these, by because there's going to be no laws. Okay. There's going to be no laws to stop anything from going on. It's going to be all out chaos. And which is what they form uh, problem, action, solution, you know, order out of chaos, order out of chaos. Okay. So that's the same thing that you see right now. And that's going back to what? Daniel's three and six and whose falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the of the burning uh fury furnace yeah and so that's what's going on right now okay or slack it well that's what's gonna happen okay because it hasn't happened you know yet but there if you don't bow down you're gonna get um get uh, murked out okay as it speaks about in revelation uh, what is that 13 and 15 as i just read earlier it says seven. Therefore, at that time, when all that people, and that's going to be a, the, that's going to be the um, hour of temptation, okay. And right now, you, we're in Jacob's trouble, you know, with the tribulation. But again, this thing's going to turn up. It's going to start, you know, um, clamping down. Okay, it's not going to get uh, better. Seven. Therefore, at that time, when all that people heard thy sound of thy cornet, flute, harp, sackboat, right, pastry, or palestry and all kinds of music all people of the nations and the languages fell down and worshiped the golden image of the neck of and the king had set up so again that's the same thing when they start implementing it far as in the um you know making it mainstream okay people are going to bow down to this image why because they like this place okay they like uh living here they like being under slavery they like their houses they like you know their women being disrespectful they like um you know their kids being disrespectful they like being under a, a, a draconian measure under tyranny which is a cruel rulership okay and so they're going to bow down to this beast system because again they just want to go back to normal but again it's not going to be back to normal because it speaks about that in Sirach 28 where it speaks about that you will um you will not be able to rest why because that the stuff the technology that they have will put a tracker on you and they can be able to track your every move and you will have no rest according to the scriptures right and all these things see like he like he was doing all that went to not okay and this also the same chapter speaks about um you know speaks about the the faith that the three holy children had shadrach meshach and abednego okay and when they were in the furnace when they put them in the when necobiza put them in the furnace and they turned the heat all the way up uh the lord and they looked inside the lord yahweh shai was with them okay the lord yahweh shai was with with the uh the three holy children showing you that's going to be the elect when we're in that um that furnace okay of adversity right and i might come back to that i just want to go to the next one so now we have the, the babylonian captivity you have the neo-babylonian captivity Okay, and now we're gonna go into what the um, the Grecians' captivity, right? And this is where the um, the wickedness was spread around the four corners of the earth. So this is First Maccabees. Let's we'll start from we we'll start from seven actually. We're gonna skip around. It says seven. So the Alexander reigned twelve years and then died. Yes. Yeah, so Alexander the creep. Okay, he reigned twelve years and what did he do? He conquered so many uh, so many parts of land. There was nothing else to conquer at that time. OK, and he actually got sad because he couldn't keep using that that sword. Right. And the servants. And this is all to 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 bring about a prophecy because Alexander is known as what that leopard. OK. And his servants bear rule everyone in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did the sons after them many years and evils were multiplied on the earth. Yep. And that's what you see today. And let me just get two scriptures to back that up. This is Proverbs 29 and 2. Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. And that's what's going on right now. People are mourning. They're crying out. They're killing their babies. Um, you know, uh, they're going to the, you know, even, even our pe people that, 
uh, they know they're Israelites, right? They're joining to joining these wicked camps that are carrying around sticks. Okay, they're joining these groups that um, have camps with Black Pan Black Panther meetings. They're they're um, they're looking for that zeal, but it's not according to knowledge, right? And the wicked are in rulership. Okay, according to what? Um, according to the scriptures that that we read, you know, Habakkuk two and five, he's enlarged his place as hell. And that's what we're in. Hell is a condition. And he's coming, he's being more and more draconian. So this is Proverbs 29 and 16. And when the wicked are multiplied, the transgression increase, but the righteous shall see their fall. Yep. So the the um the righteous are gonna see the elect's gonna see their fall up in those uh, chariots, the sea mingled glass. Okay. And um the wicked are multiplied, the transgression increase. Yeah, so the things are increasing. They're not uh, more wickedness is growing, and that's uh, you know how you know the wicked is Malachi one and four, and also o and Obadiah, where it speaks about that eagle. And if you ever look at um, any of the speeches, you have that eagle in the background. Then you have the red, white, and blue flag, which is going back to Rome. Okay, and many many other different ways that you can be able to explain who the you know who's in rulership, right? It says, yeah, so multiplying on the earth. Yeah, they all put crowns upon their head. So 10. And there came out then a wicked root, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus, the king, who had been a hostage of Rome and reigned in the 137 year of kingdom of the Greeks. And who's the Greeks? Okay, the Greeks are the Edomites. Okay, they, these are the Edomites that you see today. Okay, it says 11. And those days went out. Israel wicked men who persuaded many saying let us go make a covenant with the heathen that they are round about us for since we departed from when we had much sorrow yeah because again they were catching hell and they wanted to just be like the these uh these heathens uh they wanted to be like these heathens so what that was that wicked covenant like the people that you see IUIC um ISUPK and these groups have what a 501c3 and these other groups that are carrying around sticks and things like that they already sold out they're already merchandising the product. They're of the world, okay. So when when you when you already carrying guns to camp, Esau doesn't mean to need to make a contract with you because you're already being wicked, okay. It says um, twelve. So his device pleased them well, yeah. So his device, so his schemes, his plots. When you go into that, um, you know, it's something that the device you what to stay with uh, your righteousness, okay. Device to plot. It says, uh, there are certain people were so frowned herein there went to the king who gave their license to do all the ordinance of the heathens. Yeah, so again, going into um, our people joining these, um, joining the heathen, it says, you know, when the scriptures make no covenant with this devil. Why? Because again, he's always going to speak with a smooth tongue. His words were smoother than butter, right? It says, where, it says, whereupon they built a place of exercise of Jerusalem around the customs of the heathen. Yep. So the gymnasium goes back to being naked. Okay. And that's, that's not, that's wickedness. Right. And they had themselves uncircumcised. So again, they circumcise. There's a reason why you do that. Okay. Cause again, when you're in the womb, it's covering, it covers up your, your, you know, your private area to be able to be safe. But when you're, when you're, you know, out of the womb, you don't need that. Okay. And you cut it back. Okay. And they were, they were reversing it. Because again, that's another way how you knew who we were. And the reason why they were doing that, because they were catching hell. And when they were in these gymnasiums, the people knew, oh, that's an Israelite. Okay. It says, and made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to be the heathen and were sold to do mischief. And which is the same thing you see today. Jay-Z, Puff Daddy, any of these celebrities, they all sold out. They all get buck break. They all are down with the shaitan. They all are what um, do as thy will spirit. Okay. They're all with the wicked. The more wicked that you are, the more you're exalted. Okay, just look at any one of the celebrities. They're going to be throwing up some. some they, they're, they're all from the same gang, which is the six point, the six six six, the Kai Sai Sigma gang. Okay, you know, and and um, they're all you know. And those are symbolism of their masonry, which goes back to what May first, seventeen seventy six. Andrew Worthros, Worthrops, Worsop, something like that, right? Where they were, and that's the same thing you have here. These are the these master builders that have built up what this wicked economy that you see today. Okay, so I'm gonna skip around. First Maccabees and and our people have joined unto this devil. First Maccabees, and this is going in First Maccabees one and the forty one, and this is going into where Antiochus tried to make what his new world order. 
okay? Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to this whole kingdom that all should be one people. So same thing that uh, Nimrod was trying to do, which Nimrod re means rebellion, okay? Was, he was a Kushite. Then you had what, Nechabezir, that he was trying to bring in his new world order of the worshiping of the calf. And everyone come, you know, the governors and the princes come to worship this calf, right? And now you have Antiochus. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all shall be one people and everyone shall leave his laws. And that's what they're telling you right now. Leave the laws, leave your legislation, come in. You have no, you'll own nothing and be happy. Okay. So yeah, don't follow the law, set your commandments, you know, don't worship God because he's not going to be your savior. We are your savior. And uh, that, that devil, Yuval Noah Herrera, what did he speak about? He spoke about, uh, if there be salvation or if the, um, if there's a savior, it's going to be what in Silicon Valley, which is where all the technology is. Okay. Showing you that he's nothing but a fool and a Satanist. It says, so all heathen agreed to according to the commandment of the king. It says, yeah, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. Yes. Yeah, so religion means to worship. So they started to what worship these heathen customs just so they can be able to live. Because in this truth, according to Malachi 5, and, and, uh, what was that 5 and 10, I think. Where it speaks about, you know, you're going to be persecuted. Anybody that's persecuted for that name, you know, you shall have a reward. Okay. So you're going to be persecuted. Also, it speaks about in John where it says, um, it speaks about uh, Yahweh Shai. Um, he was persecuted. So how much more his servants? And we are those. We're praying that we're those holy servants that we're able to endure to the end. 43. And many also Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. So again, which is the same thing you see today. People don't follow the Sabbath, the moon Sabbath. OK, people are all doing their own things, you know, and they're doing their own. They're, they're living out their own ways. They're worshiping these other gods, going to these these uh, uh, sick meetings. OK, for for to to be able to have an easier life. Forty four. And the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem, and the cities of Judah, that he should follow the strange laws of the land. And forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple and that should profane the Sabbaths and festival days. And that's what they're going to tell you uh, even to this day. They're going to try to what? Take away the Bible. OK, which is the same thing that happened uh, in the sa that same time, which is what they were trying to take away the Bible. As I've seen, um, you know, they put a lady in jail because she was following the, with the Bible. OK. Yeah, that's actually in the same chapter. Right. It says, and pollute the sanctuary and the holy people. Yep. And who are the holy people? The Israelites. OK. I mean, holy means separate. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. Yes. Yeah, swine's flesh is nothing but abomination to the Lord. That's why they were. That's why Antiochus, which is an Edomite, was having them sacrifice swine flesh. Because, again, when we're not with our true power, um, our Lord's our Lord's going to destroy us. It says 48. And they should also leave. The children and uncircumcised make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. So, again, when they would have babies, they wouldn't circumcise them. Okay, which that's that's one of that's our customs. To the end that might forget the law and the change of the ordinance, whoever would not, according to the commandment of the king, he said, "You should die." It says fifty one. In the self same manner, wrote in his kingdom and appointed overseas over all the people, commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. So again, which is the same thing they want you to do today. They want you to sacrifice, um, you know, to to this devil and to that to this uh, what beast system. Okay. It says fifty two. The many of the people were gathered unto him with everyone that forsook the law and so committed evils in the land. And drove the Israelites into secret places, even wheresoever they could flee for secure. So again, so they, that's why you got a thing called what? Crypto Jews. Okay. Hidden Jews. Because again, they couldn't keep their customs in certain places and they had to flee to different parts. Right. Because of this uh, wicked abomination. If you wanted to keep the law, statute, commandments, you had to leave that place. Otherwise, what? They would put you to death. This is 1 Maccabees 1 and 56. And when they had rest... And when they had rent in pieces in the books of the law, which they had found, they had burnt, they had burnt them fire. So again, they burnt what the Bible, okay, which is the same thing they're trying to implement in this world. I remember when um, the thing happened a couple of years ago, they were telling people not to pray for people. Okay. <laughs> then also I saw another thing. It was, it was, uh, um, it was on a thumbnail and it was uh, speaking about the banning of the Bible. OK, and that's what this devil wants to do, because he knows his power in the Bible and these scriptures. Right. This word is faithful and true. First Maccabees 1 and 57. And whoever was found with the book of the Testament 
or if he committed to the law of the king's commandments was that they should be put him to death. So again, they were put to death um, if they didn't bow down to this beast system. Okay. And that's the same same uh, um, point that we're headed in today with the opening scripture. Nothing new is what under the sun. But we know all these things are going to go to naught, and these devils are going to be put under uh, under um, under under straits. Okay. According to scripture, this is uh, Psalms. Psalms 33 and 10, the Lord Yahweh will bring up the counsel of the heathen to not. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. Yeah, so they're not going to be able to um, accomplish what the, their schemes and their plots. Let's go to another scripture. This is Job 5 and 12. Job 5 and 12, he disappoint the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. What's their enterprise? Their new what order? They're not going to be able to accomplish it. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the forward is carried headlong. So again, when you when you start to rush something, you're not able to fully think about what could happen. You just have to, you know, you have to be unorganized. And these devils, be, you know, in the past they've had, um, you know, time to be able to thoroughly think about it. But this time they're going to be, uh, um, again, it seeks about, you know, the devil has but a short time, and he knows that, right? And this devil is going to be what puts a knot. This is uh, Job. Wicked's going to be put out. Job 18. Start from 5. Job 18 and 5. Let me get. Let me just highlight this real quick. Job 18 and 5. Yeah, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. So again, he's not going to be able to uh, do the things that he was doing before in the past. 6. The light shall be... It says the light shall be dark and the tabernacle and his candle shall be put out with him. Yeah. So he's going to be no more in remembrance. He's going to be in those, um, <laughs> you know, he's going to be in those fetters, irons and chains. And we should be rejoicing right now because, again, this thing is close. OK. And this devil knows it. That's why he'll cut off your video. If you if you say the you know, these certain types of words, if you're exposing him. And that's that's what we're supposed to do is make a great ins ins um was that wisdom of Solomon 1 and 9, a great inquisition against this devil, which means to put him on trial. And right now we're putting this uh, this red devil on trial, okay, which is uh, Esau, Edom in the flesh, the so-called white man, right? Job 18 and 7, the steps of his strength shall be straightened and his own counsel shall cast him down. Yeah, his own counsel. Who is that? These are these other heathen nations. They're going to cast him down. Let's see what that word says for what straighten. Yeah, so this is the Hebrews uh, 3, 3, 4, to bind, to be distressed, to be in distress, to be cramped by narrow, be in scant, in straits, narrow, make narrow, cause distress. Yeah, so they're not going to be able to uh, ask for the certain help from these different countries, okay? They're going to be straight, which is a position of difficulty. To be distressed, yeah, they're going to be frustrated because they're going to say, damn, this didn't work like we, like we all planned it. Because again, what do they have? They have these think tanks. Where they're able to think about this, where they're able to put forth political and economical um, things to op what oppress the whole world. So going back to it. All right, so, and we'll get that. Obadiah, all these, all these people that have consulted together, what's a hide and not hidden ones, they're going to be caught up. Are they going to come against this whore, according to scriptures? Because even though Russia, Russia is beefing with them, right? They still have Russians that are over here. Why don't they take out all the Russians that are over here? Okay, because they, they're still doing business. They're still being wicked. Right. Showing you that these are both Edomites. And a lot of this, there's a set up plan because, again, even um, Russia, they're part of it, too. Okay, they're part of the New World Order. But again, they don't, they, but they're fighting for power. What are they fighting for? The oil, which is the fatness of the earth. That's why they went over there to, um, right there on that on their border, 
because they they want to take over the resource. They want to take over the food. They already have natural gas and they have oil, and now they're taking over what the food. So again, they're going to be able to, um, you know, endure in this what this war. That's com that's coming coming up, okay. Right now it's already it's heating up, okay, but it's going to um, elevate. So it's Obadiah one. And seven, all men of thy confederacy, yes, so all men that are allied with you have brought thee even to the border, and that men that were at peace with thee, yes, so they, they had these allies, they had their peace, right? One of them was France, and France is starting to buck up against um, uh, Babylon the Great. You know, you had China, that's also another thing. Um, China was, was uh, you know, doing a lot of business with America, and now it's not so much, okay? I, uh, someone had said in the world, they said they're not making, uh, they're not sending any more Nikes or something like that. OK, because a lot again, all of our production is over there in China because of what? Because they don't have labor laws right? where they can be able to use the children as um, slaves, basically, and pay them low, low wages, if if not even any. All men of confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. And they that eat the bread have laid wound on, under thee. There is no understanding in them. Yeah, so they don't care about. Uh, uh, what, what you have done for him in the past. It says your trusted friends will set traps for you and you won't even know about it. <laughs> yeah, so this devil, <laughs> you know, and yeah, so exactly. And that's what, they're, that's what they're doing. They're setting traps. They're cutting off, you. they're actually cutting off your food supply. Okay, and ultimately that's the Lord. It says, eight, shall I not in that day, said Yahweh, even destroy the wise men out of Edom? Yeah, Edom is also known as the Greek word, what, Idumia, which means red, going back to Cain, uh, killing his brother Abel, and Cain was what, marked with what, leprosy, to be translucent. And that, when you go into the word, the strong definition, it goes into evidence, evidence of who the wicked is. What does red mean? Red means stop, means um, blood, means, you know, uh, you know, far as um, to pay attention when you see something that's red, you know, you're like, oh, okay, like for instance, you know, you have the parking, the parking, it's a, it's a red zone. So don't go there. And that's what our Lord's, uh, that's why he marked them with that to be what translucent to be able to, because again, a lot of the, or the people in the world at, the, uh, at that time, they were all, um, different shades of Brown. Okay. Obadiah one and nine, it says, and the mighty men, O T men shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount Esau may be cut off the slaughter. So again, they're going to be cut off. And the team are what? The Germans. Theirs are the smartest out of the Edomites. They're not going to be able to uh, uh, figure this way, figure their way out. Okay. Obadiah 1 and 10, for the violence against thy brother Jacob, which is Yequa, which is the surplanter, which is our forefather, he fought an angel and his name was turned to Israel, uh, prince of the power. And that's what you see, the 12 tribes. Okay, starting with the head tribe of Judah all the way down to, to Issachar, so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native Americans. Okay, and for that violence, brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. So again, that's going into, um, you know, them being cut off forever after the destruction of this place. They're going to be in hardcore slavery for a thousand years. Okay, and they're going to be what? Put to stubble. So I want to get this right here. This is, uh, let's see if I want to. Yeah, 15, for the day of Yahweh is near upon all the heathen, as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. That reward shall return upon thy own head. Yeah, so again, it speaks about that in Revelation uh, 18 and 6, that the, the cup that they um, drank of shall be rewarded to them double. Okay, and that goes into, let me get that. That's Revelation, I saw it, Revelation 18 and 5. <laughs> Revelation 18 and 5, and for her sins have reached, and who's that her speaking about? Uh, the mother of harlots, Babylon the Great, America. For her sins have reached into the heaven, and Yahweh have remembered her iniquities. Yeah, remembered all her sins and her evil deeds. The rape, robbing, murdering of, of the apple of his eye, which are the Israelites. 6, reward her even as she's rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, and the cup which she had filled to her double. So again, all the uh, slavery, all the oppression, all the lies, the deception, Okay, they're going to get double because, again, they drank of that cup and they're going to drink of, of this cup, too, which is slavery. Right. Just like we did. Seven. How much she had glorified herself. Yeah. So, again, that she is speaking about Babylon the Great and lived deliciously so much torment and sorrow. Give her for she said in her heart. Yeah. In her lahab or mind, I sit a queen and I am no widow and I shall see no sorrow. So, again. 
Um, she boasted in her heart, I am a queen on my throne. I am no helpless widow. I have no reason to mourn. So again, that shows you the wickedness of Esau Edom. They don't give, they don't, you know, they, they're not going to care. It says even, what is that, Revelation 9 at the end where it speaks about, um, you know, these devils are not going to have remorse. And again, we're going to beat them into remorse with the rod of, rod of uh, Yahweh Shemashah's anger. It speaks about we shall, what, meditate, meta, meditate terrors on these devils. Because again, when you think about it, we don't know all the things they've done. We only know a little bit, but the Lord's going to put that spirit of why certain reasons we, um, you know, went in certain ways. Okay. Because again, you know, this devil is, he deceived the nations. And now we're being woken up by the Lord stirring up that pure mind. Revelation 18 and 7, there sure her, therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. She shall be utterly burned with fire for the strong is Yahweh Shem Shai who judges her. Yeah, so the Lord has judged her. And who's going to bring them down? That's the, the Russians over there. Okay, they have what? Uh, Satan 2. And with that Satan 2, four of them can be able to destroy Babylon the Great. And they're able to get over here in, in 29 minutes. And also they have what? Hypersonic power. Okay, when it gets to a certain speed, you're not going to be able to catch it on radar. And Babylon the Great doesn't have that nuclear cap capability. Okay, and plus uh, Russia is going to have what China with them. And, and also these other UN and um, NATO nations, they're going to come against the whore. And that's according to scriptures. Okay, and she's going to be taken down by what? Intercontinental ballistic missiles. And also by our Lord Yahweh Shai, Daniel's 12 and 1. A time of trouble like never before, but the elect's going to be saved out of that. It says, nine, and the kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall be well and her and laminate for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. That's right. Because again, this is that, that melting pot. This is that um, where everyone comes to make money. That's why you have these heathens, you know, in Jake neighborhoods where they, 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 they own the bodega or they own the, the liquor store. Okay. And there'll be heathens in there. You know, they always have the Chinese place that feeds you nothing but, but GMO foods. OK, you have. Um, again, these different these all these heathens are able to make money here, but Jake doesn't. Now, you have some that make money, but I'm talking about in a broad sense. You might have one or two. OK, and if that it usually doesn't last. Right. There's a place over here in San Diego that they had Huffman's. And I think that was owned by Jake. And then now now it's gone. And that place was was a you know, it was a soul food place. But again, they what did they sell pork and things like that? So the Lord took that away. And that's what it's speaking about when these people shall mourn, because, again, all these nations over here have people over here. They have, you know, the Russians, the Chinese, you know, they, they all come over here to be able to make money. And then what do they do? They send it back. OK. Meanwhile, Jake is oppressed. Right. So all these torments are going to be on them. What? Double. And that goes into, you know, after the, uh, you know, the destruction of World War Three, after the elect is sealed. Right. We're going to go back to this. This is Obadiah. Obadiah 1 and 15, for the day of Yahweh is near upon all the heathen, it has slack him, as thou hast done, and it shall be done unto thee, that reward shall return upon thine own head. So we read about that in Revelation 18. It says 16, for as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, so the mountain goes into the government, governments, right? So shall all the heathen drink continually. Yeah, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. Yeah, so again, they're going to start to uh, stagger because, again, that's that strong drink, okay? And they're going to not going to be able to, uh, <laughs> it says, yes, all nations will drink and stagger and disappear from history. Yeah, so they're not going to be no more in remembrance, okay? Now, the heathens are going to come back, but they're going to be in slavery. They're not going to be no, speaking about, they're not going to be no more in power. It says, but upon my Mount Zion, and what is Zion? Zion is the, the people. That Zion goes into what? The monument. Okay, which is uh, um, the Hebrew Israelites, the apple of Yahweh Shem eyes, shall be de shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. So again, going back to what um, the land, reclaim their inheritance, reclaiming who they are. Okay, which is their rightful status, which is what the Nephilim, the true giants. Okay, <laughs> the true giants. You know what I mean? Which is why, because we're coming back to our true power, we're going back to the, the motherland, right? And the Lord's going to bring us there. Obadiah 1 and 18, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire. Yeah, so they're going to be a fire, right? And the house of Joseph a flame. So those are those two tribes coming together, okay, that had beef before, but now they're being reunited through this word. That's Ezekiel um, 37, where it speaks about those dry bones that will be what healed, and they will what stand in that great army. 
And again, our Lord's going to give us spiritual powers if we're of the elect to be able to fight against these devils and put them in subjection. Right. It says in the house of Esau, which Esau is the white man for stubble and they shall kindle in them and devour them. They shall not be any more remaining of the house of Esau for Yahweh has spoken it. That's right. And if the Lord has spoken it. He that that is what it is. Malachi three and six. He changes not. OK. And he's not also not a man that would lie. So, again, that's after, um, you know, the destruction of this place, the Karagma. OK. And then, um, you know, the Lord's going to bring us uh, back to our land. And we're going to have these devils in hardcore slavery for a thousand years. And after that, they're going to be put to stubble. They're going to be burnt up, be no more in remembrance. OK, because, again, they're not we're not going to we don't need wickedness in the kingdom and there's not going to be. OK, so we don't need uh, Esau, Edom and these other heathen nations will go back to their lands and they will understand what a righteous rulership is all about. Right. So with that, call Yahweh by Shimia Rashai by Shimra Krakodash. Shalom to Alek Kwam Yashalom.